In this video, I'm going to carve a jack-o'-lantern using a three-axis CNC router. The real purpose of this, besides getting into the Halloween spirit in the most unnecessarily complex way possible, is to experiment with carving stock material that has an irregular shape. Like most CNC machines that you might have at home, mine does not get any feedback about what it's actually carving. There aren't any sensors that are going to tell it if it's actually doing what you intended it to do to the stock material. It's just following the instructions that it's been given on blind faith. This isn't really a challenge if you're carving, say, a block of wood with square edges and a flat surface. You just enter the dimensions into your CAM software and you're good to go. But we've got a more complex shape here, so we're going to need to have some very specific information about the surface features of this particular pumpkin in order to define our tool paths. The level of precision that's needed depends on what you're trying to do, and there are sophisticated ways to accomplish this with photogametry or 3D scanners, but for the purposes of this video, we're going to go as low-tech as possible to get the job done. I threw together this frame with some scrap MDF to hold our pumpkin still while we work. For the 3D model we're going to make, we're just concerned with the part of the pumpkin that's above the surface of the frame, which is the area that we're going to be carving. To get started, I've taken a photo facing each side of our setup, and I'm holding a ruler in the frame for scale. It's important to hold the ruler at the depth of the feature that we're trying to capture with each image. So for example, when I want to get the profile of the midline of the pumpkin, I need to hold the ruler or whatever I'm using for scale reference at that same distance from the camera. I'll be working in Fusion 360, which is my weapon of choice for modeling and cam work. The first thing I'm going to do is bring the top view image in as a canvas and stick it on the XY plane. To calibrate it, we just select two points that are a known distance from each other, like these two lines on the ruler, and then enter the distance. Once I've done that, I create a sketch on the same plane, and then I just start tracing the pumpkin with the spline tool. Notice that I'm tracing the widest part of the pumpkin, which is at the same height as the ruler. This is key because anything above or below that will not be calibrated in this image due to the effect of perspective. I close this sketch with a line at either end of the pumpkin using the edge of the wood frame as reference. The curvature and depth can play tricks on your eyes, but I know that the ends of the pumpkin are actually flat against these surfaces. Now I'm going to insert a new canvas on the XZ plane at the midline. I'm not even going to bother using the ruler to calibrate this time. I'm just going to eyeball it by aligning the image with the points that I've already created. And now I can start tracing the profile from this angle. I need to make sure there's a point at the center top so I've got something to connect to when I do the side view. And I need to make sure I put a line across the bottom to close the shape. Now I can create a new sketch plane at the bottom end using the line we drew on that edge of the box. This gives me a surface to work on for another canvas and sketch. To help me see what I'm doing here, I drew a pencil line on the bottom of the pumpkin at about the point where it starts to flatten out. I know this gets a little tedious, but I've got to do that same process for the top end and then the side view, and then we can move on to the fun part. With my profiles all drawn, I'm going to use what's called a loft to create a solid body. If I did all of that correctly and the lines meet where they're supposed to, I can select two profiles to loft together and then select the lines that I want to act as rails. If I bring the reference images back in, you can see that we've got a pretty good likeness of our pumpkin. Definitely good enough for our purposes, at least. So now to design our jack-o'-lantern, I'm going to construct a sketch plane above the pumpkin and bring in my reference image for carving. The lines I'm drawing here are going to be the center line of my tool paths, so I need to make sure I'm leaving enough space between them for the thickness of the cutting tool. 
All right, I'm just gonna switch over to the Manufacture tab now and create a new setup. For the stock mode, instead of using a box, we can select From a Solid and click on the pumpkin model. And for the origin, I'm going to select a point at the center top from one of the sketches we did earlier. And now we can create a 3D toolpath using the project function. This is going to take the lines we drew for our design and project them onto the surface of the pumpkin. This is a strategy that's often used for engraving, but if we set the depth of cut to the thickness of the walls of the pumpkin by adjusting the axial offset, we can cut all the way through. Then I'm going to create another toolpath using the project strategy for the insides of the ears and the whiskers, but this time I'm just going to cut to a quarter inch depth. Since the simulation is looking pretty good, we're going to go ahead and set up in the machine. I've marked my X and Y midline on the box, so I can go ahead and get a zero off of those and then just touch off of the top of the pumpkin to get my Z zero. I have no idea what kind of speeds and feeds to use for pumpkin carving, but honestly, I don't think it's gonna matter too much. 